The Lion King is one of Disney's greatest achievements. It's an epic animated musical with the deepest amount of drama found in the company's renaissance period. It's bold, touching, and best of all, at times, it's tragic. Something Disney does not do often. One of the most remarkable aspects about The Lion King is that it is a Disney animated feature that is not inspired by a fairy tale or children's book. In the last few years, that has been a little more common. But in 1994, it was rare. Not unheard of, but not the norm either. Disney's most famous films up to that point had been Cinderella, Snow White, Alice in Wonderland, The Little Mermaid, Peter Pan, Beauty and the Beast, and various other films that were adapted from stories meant for children. So, it might have come as a surprise for those who grew up with The Lion King when they learned that much of the modern classic was inspired by The Tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, by William Shakespeare. In fact, all three Lion King movies have a Shakespearean connection, but that will come later. For now, let's put Hamlet and The Lion King side by side. Hamlet, easily one of the most famous plays by William Shakespeare, is the sad tale of a young prince whose father has been murdered by his uncle, Claudius. Due to this unspeakable act, Claudius ascends the throne of Denmark. Hamlet slowly learns the truth and plots his revenge. The Lion King is also the tale of a young prince, Simba, whose father has been murdered by his uncle, in this case, Scar. Following this, Scar becomes king, and after some time away, Simba plans to oust Scar from power. Same story. Before delving into the similarities, there are some notable differences that should be mentioned. In the play, the uncle marries Hamlet's mother, who was previously married to the now-dead king. During the course of The Lion King, we never actually see Scar become romantically involved with Simba's mother or any of the other females. Draw your own conclusions here. Hamlet also features many, many soliloquies and philosophical speeches about life and death. The only philosophy in The Lion King is the brief mention of the Circle of Life and Hakuna Matata. Now to the similarities. One of the most famous, and frankly parodied, scenes in Hamlet features the titular character holding the skull of Yurik. It's a touching and frightening moment in which Hamlet gives a long lamentation and waxes philosophical on death, a recurring theme in the play. In The Lion King, this is referenced, although in less grandiose terms. Scar, not Simba, the Hamlet replacement, is seen holding a skull and briefly talking to it in a way similar to Hamlet, albeit only for a moment. It's a reference, not a direct parallel. Hamlet has a long, sometimes contentious relationship with Ophelia, his love interest. Simba has a long, sometimes contentious relationship with Nala, his love interest. In Hamlet, the play opens with the ghost of Hamlet's father, the murdered king, appearing and disappearing. The dead king even speaks to Hamlet himself later in the play. The ghost gives Hamlet vital information and advice. In The Lion King, Mufasa, another dead king, appears to Simba in the clouds and instructs him about what he needs to do. The main difference between the death of Hamlet's father and Simba's father is that the King of Denmark dies before the events of the play, while the audience actually witnesses the death of Mufasa early in the movie. If all this were not enough, Timon even says, What's in a name? A quote from Shakespeare, even though it is from a different play. It's the inspiration for The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, that play being Romeo and Juliet. Anyone with even a cursory high school freshman knowledge of Shakespeare is aware of the basic outline of this play. Romeo, a member of the House of Montague, falls in love with Juliet, a member of the House of Capulet. In Lion King 2, Simba's daughter, Kiara, befriends Kovu, a member of a group of lions who sided with Scar. These lions are banished from Pride Rock and live in exile. Understandably, they feel shunned and try to use the friendship between Kovu and Kiara to their advantage. Simba, contrarily, simply wants them to never see each other. In Romeo and Juliet, Friar Lawrence plays a pivotal role in bringing the two lovers together. In Lion King 2, the role of spiritual guide is filled by Rafiki, the only character, at first, who seems pleased that the two young cubs are becoming closer. At the end of the play, Romeo and Juliet kill themselves. Now, with this being a Disney film, especially one handled by Disney Toon Studios, a production house not known for taking risks, there was not much chance of seeing Simba's offspring die. In fact, Disney proper would not do that either. However, the very end of Lion King 2 does tie things up in the same way that the play does, immediately following the deaths of the two title characters. In the play, the feud between Montague and Capulet ends. 
In the animated film, the feud between the Prideland Lions and the Outsiders ends as well. This brings us to the third Lion King film, strangely titled The Lion King One and a Half, or in some regions, The Lion King Three, Hakuna Matata. It features Timon and Pumbaa, two comparatively lesser characters from the first film, suddenly the main stars. They go through the events of the first film from their perspective, suggesting they were more important to the story than originally thought. The premise is very similar to that of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, a play by Tom Stoppard which used two minor characters from Hamlet to tell a new story. In the play, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern discuss the nature of their lives while the events of Hamlet play out around them. The Lion King One and a Half is the same thing, only a lot less talky. Again, this is not a play by Shakespeare, but it is based on Shakespeare's characters. Reimaginings of the Bard's play are not uncommon. Although Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead feels like an homage to Shakespeare, Lion King One and a Half is more like a parody. It retells the events of an epic film in a completely comedic way. In that sense, it almost feels like an insult, but in fairness, it has better production values than most Disney direct-to-video sequels. At the end of the play, much as the title suggests, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern pass away. The final scene contains lines directly from Hamlet, announcing that the two characters are dead. At the end of The Lion King One and a Half, Timon and Pumbaa continue to watch the original film. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and if one links this animated film with Tom Stoppard's play, one could make the argument that it too is non-canon with the original story. Only a side story that may or may not have happened within the lore of the source material. Anyway. The inclusion of Shakespearean references in Disney films is a welcome change from years of saving princesses. Hopefully, upon children realizing that their favorite Disney film was based on Hamlet, it might inspire them to do some more serious reading. Even if that is not the result, at least with the help of the theater inspiration, audiences received one of the best Disney animated features of all time.